Hi, and welcome to the A Traveling Knitter channel. This video is the December podcast episode. My name is Steph, and I am recording to you from a gloomy, but like a good gloomy, 2024 in uh, Columbus, Ohio in the United States. Yeah, I'm filming in January. I had every intention to film in December. I even tried to film uh, yesterday and I don't know what was up with my phone. I I tried to do do it with my watch and I kept shutting it off. And so I would, you know, I'd be talking to no, nothing. <laughs> And there's no indication when it turns off. There's no like light or anything, uh, which would be nice if there was some sort of light to tell me if it was recording or not. Um, so there isn't. So that happened twice, um, which was kind of frustrating. And then all of a sudden my phone decided it had no storage. And so that was confusing. So I was looking and somehow my photos was using almost 50 gigs of my storage and my mail inbox was using like a ton and overdrive uh i think that's my app that's the app that i use for podcasts i it's not a very it's not a super common one but i just i really like the the interface and i like the settings um, which existed years before those ex settings existed within the iTunes or Apple podcaster one. So either way, that guy was also using 50 gigabytes. I'm like, what in the world is going on? And then I looked at my system and like system was using 15. And then there's like another one that is also, a, a, there's like iOS and then system. So like both of them are you, you can't do anything about it. And both of those combined were using 30. And I'm like, what in the world is going on? So I kept deleting stuff. I deleted like 130 videos and it didn't free up anything. So I'm not sure, I shut it off. <laughs> and then today, magically, I have 40 gigs again available to me. I, I don't know what was happening. I was on like Apple forums. Um, and uh shoot what is that reddit i don't use reddit very often <laughs> but i was on reddit and like other people had complained that there was I, I feel like there was some sort of caching uh situation where it was maintaining data and then not scrubbing it or removing it at the end of the day or, or whatever insert timing here so uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> I spent almost three hours trying to record a podcast yesterday and I, I called it quits at nine o'clock. I was like, it's, it's over, I'm, I am done. So here we are the next day trying it again. Um, I'm sitting next to my Christmas tree. This year, I, I didn't wanna decorate it. I like, I wanted it to be natural and that's never my style. So I don't really have anything to put on a tree that's natural, like burlap, um, I don't, like natural things. I'm, I wanna say like lumberjacky stuff, but like, do you know what I'm, do you know what, I, what vision I have? Like burlap bows, white bows, Sticks, pieces of log, birds, berries. That's what I wanted to go for. But that would have made it the third year in a row where I completely changed up the theme of my tree. And that's just getting a bit expensive and also storage. Luckily, I do have pretty good storage for an apartment, but I, you know, I am paying a premium for that. Um, it is a two bedroom apartment. So I basically just use the second closet as my storage unit. So anyway, there's no decorations on my tree and I think it looked beautiful this year. I loved having it in the background of my work calls and I, I love just kind of turning around and looking at it. 
anyway, with that super long intro, let's chat about the things that I worked on in the month of December. I don't have all of my finished objects with me, which I feel like is common in December because I gifted them, but I do have some of them. I went on a little journey making bow ties. Ah, isn't it cute? It's so cute. This bow tie is for uh, one of my friends, her dog. It's a very big bow tie because it's a very big dog. Liz, if you're watching this, this is for Pico. Pico is a great Pyrenees, uh, so I think this will fit proportionately well for him. The pattern is free. It's by Stacey Winklepeck. She is one of the hosts of the Nitpicks podcast, and she designed this pattern. I'll be honest, I basically just read the construction and then that was it. It's free, so I don't feel bad talking about it. Um, if you're curious, I, gosh, I don't remember what it's called. I just typed in um, dog bow tie, I think, or maybe just bow tie. And this is one of the patterns that pops up. Essentially, what you're doing is you're going to make a tube, like a connected cube. Um, you cast on with a, uh, a cast on that you would use to do toe up sock, so it's seamless. And then you bind off with Kitchener, so it's seamless. And then you make an I cord and you tie the I cord around and then you tie it again to make a loop. And this loop is what's going to go on the animal's collar because it doesn't have to be a dog, right? It could be a cat. Or if you, your rabbit has a collar or your ferret or whatever. I mean, I think humans could even have it. Like, it's really cute. I think so. I mean, it's a bit big and I probably wouldn't wear it with this coloring uh, as a hair accessory, but it is, it is really cute. So I made one of these and then I made a mini version for my sister-in-law and I made her socks to match. I started with the socks and then I had leftovers, clearly. Uh, and I thought, like, how cute would it be to match with your dog? So, um, yeah, so it's a lot, a lot smaller. And I sent that off and so I don't have it. But hopefully at some point I'll be able to share a picture of Dexter the dog wearing his bow tie and Pico the dog wearing his bow tie. I've got a couple others that are not quite finished. I have this one. Oh, and this is Cascade Heritage Prints. Not sure what the which number it is, but I have another one where I just need to make the I cord. I ran out of yarn, so I'll have to use a different yarn for the I cord. But this is going to be for my friend's cat. And then I have another one that I just need to bind off. It's a brown one. This will be for another one of my friend's dog, whose name is Flynn. Uh, like from Tangled, so I thought brown would work. And just because we're at it already, I have another one that just, you know, needs, I don't know, maybe half an hour to finish it. And it is a yellow, yellow gold color. And this is for my friend uh, who has Flynn. This is for her other dog, whose name is Jane. And I thought this was like Jane from Tarzan, her dress. So... I'm obsessed with the bow ties, guys. I'm loving it. It's a great way to use up scraps. It uses barely anything, like maybe three or four grams, like almost nothing. I have a couple other balls of yarn that I grabbed or scraps to do. So I've got a Hawthorne and it picks Hawthorne speckle. I have a uh, variegated orange and teal. And then I have a little bit more of that Cascade Heritage Print yarn. I also made some hats, two hats for a friend of mine, uh, his daughters. And I bought them a hat, a hat, a book from Barnes and Noble. And it was like my woolly hat and me or something. It was about a bear and his special hat. And I just thought it was cute. 
So this is one of those hats because children's head sizes uh, confuse me. I just never know. So I didn't weave the ends in when I gave them the hats and one of the hats fit, the other one did not fit. Um, they, which I was like, you know, I, I knew that there was a chance that I wasn't gonna know. I'm not around children a lot. So I just, I never know with the sizing. And um, I was wrong for the two year old, which um, she then was like, don't feel bad. Her head circumference is in like the 95th percentile. So she has a very large head for her body size. Um, like she's in, I think, I don't know, the 20th percentile for her body, but the 95th for her head. So um, she's gonna be a smart kiddo. <laughs> Um, both of them are super outgoing, which I just think is really cool. Um, especially because my, my friend, he's the, he's the dad. <laughs> uh, he's not super outgoing. He's a bit more reserved and they're kind of pandemic babies. Uh, the older one, you know, she was born before the pandemic, but she's now five. So it's basically, she's just been there during the pandemic. And then of course the, the littlest one is two kind of a pandemic baby, but maybe more so on the outside. I'm not sure what we're calling pandemic babies anymore. But anyway, they're both very outgoing and uh, I made them hats. And I kind of just used leftover DK that I had. So this is a mix of deep dyed yarns, which I used in my Soldotna. This lighter pink variegated is from Birch and Lily that I used in a cowl, the Kindra cowl. And then this one up here is Suburban Stitcher that I also used in a cowl. It was a Haunted Mansion cowl by Tannis Gray. So I just need to pretty much undo to here and then just do two additional repeats and then do the crown decreases. The pattern is from this book, which I love. This is by Cascade. I have almost all of them. And I want to say you might be able to find the patterns that are in here for free and then not buy the book. But I've, I've said it so many times. I love pattern books. I love flipping through them. I love having them. I love books in general. So extending it to pattern books just makes sense. Um, they're very affordable. The sticker price is $17.95, which with inflation, I'm not sure if the, like, re so this is copyright 2011. So it's over 10 years old. I'm assuming that if it's still in production and being printed, the price probably has increased, but you can find these on Amazon. Uh, I know when I went to Vogue Knitting Live, Cascade, I think, tends to be one of the sponsors and they'll have these books for sale. And a lot of times I have like a deal with them where I want to say they had them all for like $10 or something, but either way, I really like them. I think they're fantastic value and almost everything in here I genuinely like. So like this, I want to make this, but for an adult, like how cool, like what a good idea to do um, a knitted blanket and then back it with um, a fabric. They backed it with, also this kid is just like, why am I here? What is this life? Uh, they backed it with uh, cotton. I was thinking you could back it with, um, uh, what is that soft fabric? I, I'm blanking, completely blanking. Joanne Fabrics always has a ton of that soft stuff and always like on sale. Or you could do that, um, the even softer fabric. I don't know my fabrics, guys, sorry. It's, the other one is um, thicker and a lot of times you use it to make knot blankets. Like I've, I've got one, fleece, fleece. So, I, I just think that'd be cute. I'm not sure how like the blanket would stretch and the fabric wouldn't. And then would you have like a weird shape? I guess you could quilt over it. I wonder how that would be to quilt over 
a knitted fabric and a fabric fabric. I don't know. But anyway, um, the hat pattern is the Garter Ridge hat by Terry Crews. And there's another picture of it. It does have two sizes, but it's fairly simple. You can adapt it. The pattern is written for, for sport. I did it in DK. It's fine. It's a hat. So I really, really like that. And I've got some more leftovers. So I have two more Birch and Lily Birch DKs. This is the natural, and then this one is terracotta, maybe? And I have two suburban stitchers, that purpley blue speckle and a lime green. I bought these together to make that cowl, and I think they were a kit to make something. And then I do have all colors still of my Soldatna crop, but barely. So the most in the green, cause I haven't used it. And then I used this one for this hat and I have a bit of the red and then a tiny bit of the pink. So I was thinking I could make a bow tie or I could do like stripes with this because I don't think I'll have enough to make one hat unless I make like a tiny one. So that's that. Um, my goal is to undo, redo this by mid-January so that I can bring it back to them. And that's all I finished because I ran out of yarn for the sweater that should have been finished in December. In my pick your poison bag, we have my festival sweater. She's honestly quite heavy, quite heavy, quite dense. And I am out of yarn. All I have to do is the ribbing. That yarn is on back order. <laughs> so if it had been available, um, I would have finished this, you know, uh, when I was at my parents for Christmas, hands down, would have been finished. So it's a little disappointing that this sweater is going to be a 2024 finish when all I'm doing is waiting on one skein of yarn, two skein. I can't remember how many I asked for. So I have a little bit left of the contrasting colors. And as soon as I finish this guy, I'm going to cast this on to make something so that I use up all of my scraps. The yarn is Sun is Gone Double Sunday, and the colors are, I've literally said these colors five times because of how many times I've, I've tried to record this episode. So the main color is 2321, and then the contrast colors are both petite knit colors. And it's 9882 and 3553. Three. I do not remember which is which. So the moment I have that yarn, this sweater is going to be finished. And I can't wait to wear it. I think it's going to look so cute. And it looks like something you would buy in the store, I think. So I couldn't finish that sweater. So I then jumped back to my Azalea sweater, which is this guy. This was a test knit that I clearly failed. Um, I talked about this. I somehow did not order the correct amount of yarn by a lot, a lot. And oh, and then also too, it took forever for me to get the yarn. I had ordered it thinking I would get it before I went to LA for a month. That didn't happen. It literally arrived when I was on the plane to fly to LA, like terrible timing. So then I had a month of not being able to start this. Um, so I was already a month and a half behind. 
And then I started it and realized I did not have enough yarn for this. So that was a bummer. So then I bought more and then when it came in, it was a different dye lot and very obviously different. So it just like really put me off. But here I am, I'm back on it. I need to measure this to see how much more I need to knit. Um, I have one more skein left of the original color that I'm going to split to then do the sleeves and blend it into the new dye lot. Have the collar to go, you know, both sleeves and then the bottom. So I'm not sure how much further to go. I made the sleeve hole pretty deep, I want to say. So I didn't, I haven't done a ton from the sleeve, but you know, I, it's, this is going to block, it's, or going to, to stretch out. And then, you know, you have the ribbing. So I'm not sure. I'm, we'll see how fast the sleeves go. My favorite part is definitely the seed, or not seed stitch, the bee stitch. I would love an entire sweater in that stitch. It'd be gorgeous. So there it is. The yarn I'm using is Drops Air, which, and it's in the color 41. That is 65% alpaca, 28% polyamide, 7% wool, 50 grams for 164 yards or 150 meters. I am really liking this. I think this is going to be such a nice piece to wear and it looks super complicated, but it hasn't been. I don't look at a pattern. It's been, um, you know, pretty easy. <sighs> Drops Air is extremely similar to Knit Picks Wonder Fluff. And between the two, I would pick Wonder Fluff. It is more consistent in the tubing. I found that some of the drops air skeins that I have, the tubing isn't filled. And so it'll like, it, and it was like a puff, nothing, a puff, nothing, a puff, nothing. So it was really unpleasant. Um, does that make, make sense? So uh, I have not had that issue with Knit Picks Wonder Fluff. The color selection is better for Drops Air. Um, there's a lot more neutral colors or muted colors, whereas the Knit Picks colors are bright and in your face. Knit Picks in general is more bright and in your face. They don't actually do a ton of neutrals, which is interesting because neutrals is definitely the, um, the trend. So, very much love this. My goal is to have this finished with like by the end of February. That's my goal for this one. And I think I could make it because I've definitely been putting a lot of steady progress into it. My next cast on, um, everything else I think is, oh no, I have one more thing that's not new and then everything else is new because December, instead of doing what I normally would do, which is quick, let's finish all the projects. So I went the complete opposite and was like, cast it on, cast it on, cast it on. Um, I don't regret it. It was definitely what my mental mood needed. So now I have a ton of things to work on. I did work almost, not double, no, I worked quite a bit on this long lingering whip. Because I got to, you know, I was basically at the end of the year and I was like, I didn't work on this once. And this is not complicated. This is a blanket by Skananigans. I don't remember what it's called. Um, but I am using acrylic yarn. They're all Karen, Karen Simply Soft. And then this one is a Bernat Baby. What's interesting though, is you can see so this is all what I did, I don't know, 2018. And then we get to <laughs> what I knit this, this month. 
Clearly my gauge has changed, like significantly. But you know what? It's fine. It's a blanket. It's not going to be that big of a deal, especially because this is only one stripe. So the plan is to just mirror image what I've done. I've used all the colors at this point. So there's that green. So I'm then going to go back to blue and then to the tan and then to the orange. And then um, I'll pick another color order to do. I haven't decided if I'm going to do it in the exact same color order, if I'll switch it up. Don't know yet. Uh, if you're curious, the Bernat Baby Sport is in uh, baby gray. So that Sport, the other ones I think are like worsted or DK or something. Um, this is persimmon. This one is blue mint. This one is bone, which is interesting. This is not white enough to be bone in my opinion. And the last one is lime white. I'm not sure if you can get those colorways anymore. I bought it a very long time ago. So here we are bringing another blanket into 2024. Would love to actually finish it this, this year, but that's okay. Uh, okay, so everything else is a new cast on. I wanted to join the cast on or cowl that Amanda of Birch and Lily and um, Golden Hour Knits, I'm blanking on her name. Um, they are doing a Jesse made Cozy Classic Raglan. Not sure what the, the name of it is. So I cast on. In another lilac lavender sweater, the yarns I'm using are um, Rowan Kid Silk Haze in the color 697. Pretty sure this said lavender online. And then, Matt, where's my little guy? Dye Mad Yarns in the National Bubble Tea Day colorway. This is their Chester Sock, which is a 2575. Said that in the opposite order, but this is a local to me dyer. So together, this is the swatch it makes. Very pretty. So I'm not very far. I just have the collar done and I can't remember if I finished the short rows or if I still have like one or two to go, but that's what I was doing. Next up, I decided to actually use my advent calendar. I don't normally I just collect them, but this year I just had the urge to do something with it, which is great. So the advent that I did this year, normally I have like a 24, 25 mini skein. This year I decided to go a different route and get like an advent Sunday calendar where in this instance, I got full, full 100 gram skeins. Um, I got mine from Artemis Yarns. She is a, they are a dyer in, they're a dyer in France. And I got mine in a single space. And the fade, ooh, does this. Okay, you, you can't tell. So let's try that again. So the green one is soft citrus. This one is sun kissed. This one is sweetheart. 
then we have wisteria, and then lastly, blue sky. So together, I am knitting the shawl pattern that the um, advent came with, which is designed by Artemis Yarns. So it's alternating garter plus a lace. And you're gonna use all the colors, but when I was looking at the pattern, so there's different ways to do it. You can use minis, you can, oh, I'm gonna be out of battery soon. And you can use the full skeins. And then I looked at how much you were using and the order, and I didn't love it. Uh, basically, so for the large size, you would use all five colors. The first color, because it's a tip, you're only using 63 grams. Then the other ones are 93 grams, 97 grams, 78 grams. And then color five is 34 grams. So I didn't love that because it's a 100 grams, grams gain. And then I looked at the pattern and realized it wasn't symmetrical. So here, you're starting with a garter on the end. On the other side, you're ending with a lace. I don't love that. That also means, or is the reason for why, you're not using your color five very often. So here, I'm using my first color for both, or for two sections. At the end, you're only using color five fully for one section. So then the second section is a blend. So for this, the third section is the blend. I didn't like that, so I reworked the pattern. I just extended it. I adjusted some of my numbers, and um, that's gonna get me a symmetrical shawl and using at least 50% of my skein, of my fifth skein. The pattern is Moon Cloud, I think. Moon Cloud Shawl. If you're curious, somehow prove to me that you have that pattern and then I'll, I'll let you know what I did. Now, I haven't tested it out. I just did some quick maths. Um, I am confident that everything will be fine, that I'm not gonna run out of yarn, but you know, there's still a chance. I think it should be fine. So there's that. I love knitting with singles. It's so nice. And this was, this is simple enough that I was able to knit on this while watching Wonka in the movie theater. While I was on the train of let's use my advent skeins, I decided to cast on last year's advent as well, which was from Teal Torch Knits. There it is. Um, this is Brioche Adventures. And this is a 24 mini skein set that I'm using. I am, I'm modifying the pattern just a little bit to use up more of my mini skein. I think with the pattern as written, I was gonna end up with around four grams or so of leftover yarn of every color. I don't need that, so I just extended the repeat a little bit longer, so it'll be fine. That's everything that I've worked on. So touching on the acquisitions, the new things that have, that have entered my life, I have some skeins of yarn that I got at Nitty City. I was in New York in December and went to Nitty City, purchased some yarn. I got one skein of Forever King from Five Borough Yarns, or Farewell King. I would have loved to have more of this, but they only had one skein. And then I picked up these four to make some sort of stripy sweater. It is Yarn Over New York in the Possum colorway and Plucky Knitter in their Set in Stone colorway. So there's that. 
My mom got me a La Bien Aime single skein and this is in the colorway Flying Knitter. She liked the name because of my channel name and I love singles so much. And the purple's gorgeous. Don't know what I'm gonna make, but probably something for my neck. And I also got a West Yorkshire Spinner kit to make the Prancer Sock Kit. The colors are candy cane, candy cane. And cayenne pepper. The pattern is by Winwick Mum. And my mom got me the pattern because we used to have a dog named Prancer. He passed away several years ago, but if you have been a long time follower, uh, you would have seen him in some of my like footage or I would have talked about him. He is the only dog I've ever had and he's the best. And every now and then he is still the background on my phone. Um, other things. My mom got me a metal polishing kit because my Licka copper needles tarnish so bad. Like they're so nice when I'm using them, but when I put them away, you can see the dullness in the other ones. So I have a polishing cloth. And then she also got me this is a, uh, a brush from Coco Knits, which I was, I also, I've been wanting one of these for so long and I'm so excited I have one. Ah, it's the train case from Della Q. I was reading the instructions for this and it said to brush, to brush this box. So perfect. I am in love with this thing and they just came out with a hat box. I want the hat box too. Oh, I love it. So this is, um, it's pretty sturdy. It comes with two different straps. You have the handles like this and then you have a over the shoulder strap. It sits up like this. This is me uh, metal or magnetic. So, and your scissors can go here. There is a tray that you can remove, but the tray has enough space in between it that you can thread your yarn through here. So it's a yarn threader. And then of course you have more space on the inside. Oh, it's just so cute. I love it so much. And I can't wait to use it for something. I also have some new books. One I asked for for Christmas. It's the Pika Pow 3. I have one and two. Oh, they're so cute. I want to make it a goal this year to actually knit or crochet one of these guys. I mean, how cute. Such an adorable gift. And some of these clothes are removable so you can make, you know, different versions of them. Oh, so cute, so cute, so cute. I think also too, because they're all in similar colors that they just go so well together. Ah, uh, so cute. Then Barnes and Noble had their sale. Now it wasn't 50% off. It was 33% off, which was a bit of a bummer, but also it's a sale. Like you're not guaranteed a sale. Um, I unfortunately, so I did mess up in that if you spent $50, you got $20 in rewards and I spent 107 because I used a $5 gift, $5 off reward that I already had, which then put me at my below tax or before tax under a hundred dollars. I think I was at 99.50. 
yeah, so I missed out on $20. So instead of $40, I only got $20. It, I was so, so angry. Uh, I was more so because it wasn't a good day and just that happening and then some other things happened compounding to me just being so angry with that day. <laughs> but anyway, I did buy two books that were on my list. I have a spreadsheet of books that I want to get during the hardback sale. Side note, they didn't have the board games on sale this year. That's where I go ham. I buy like three, four board games because board games are expensive. Anyway, I picked up the Nightmare Before Christmas and the Star Wars, which I think was maybe one of the first, either Harry Potter or Star Wars was the first book. I didn't pick up Lord of the Rings because it wasn't there. So Lord of the Rings will be a next year purchase. I This has become a, ha a habit where I buy these. So excited to have these. I love fandom. I was also trying to guess which, so these are put together by Tannis Gray. She doesn't make all the patterns in them, but she, um, she knits, she makes quite a few of them and she, uh, puts them together, curates, asks for submissions. I was trying to think like what fandoms are left and I caught, well, I mean, I didn't say it out loud, but I had predicted that Nightmare Before Christmas was going to be one of them and Lord of the Rings was going to be the other one. Um, and those are the two that came out. So I am, I am trying to think what other fandoms are big enough. So there's two Harry Potters and I actually there's three, I think, cause there's a crochet version. And then there are two Disney's. I want to say there's two, one or two Disney's. And then these guys, what I just mentioned. So I'm kind of like, trying to think maybe they'll do a Pixar one because that could be something you could go into. I mean, like Coco would be really fun. There's a lot of stuff there. So I'm, I'm trying to think, I wonder if we're going to go into like bookish things because romanticy is definitely having its moment. I mean, it kind of always has, but I think it's definitely more present you know like Sarah J Moss has been out there crushing it but it's now all over and I'm I'm here for it I like romanticy I like fantasy I like romance I like them together I'm I'm cool with it all so I'm kind of wondering if we're gonna do like a fantasy bookish one I don't know if we could f do an entire like Sarah J Moss which I would love that. That'd be amazing. I would love, I would definitely try and like design something and submit it. I think that'd be so fun. Um, that would be really cool. Um, oh, Nintendo, like Mario. Not for me. I'm it's not my, not my favorite thing. Like I don't care that much about that franchise but that would be fun. An Animal Crossing one, that would be really fun. Yeah, Animal Crossing would be really fun because you could do like all the different fruits. You could um, use the leaf motif on things. Like you could recreate Nook's, like his, his shirt. Um, you could do some of like the iconic characters or characters your um villagers um all of the like the fish that would actually be really fun animal crossing would be really fun what about some like anime or manga i mean i'm all for pokemon i would love i would still love like a pokemon themed book but i just don't i don't know i feel like pokemon isn't huge with the knitting community Those are the ones that I think are cool. What are my predictions? I think there's going to be some sort of Disney one again. Pixar would be cool to do a Pixar specific one. Lastly, I did purchase some new toss. 
um, some new sewing patterns because Vogue had a sale for them for $6. Vogue is probably the most expensive uh, big box and I don't have a ton of them, but I had a list. So I picked up V9189, which is an original 1960s vintage. No, I just, pants, thought that'd be fun. V1829, and I bought quite a lot of fabrics to try and make these. I found a bunch of clearance fabrics so that they ended up being like $2 a yard. So if I, I'm not good at sewing. So if they turn out terrible, I just throw it away. Like I've done with like two other sewing projects. Then I grabbed V1876. I love corset tops and I think I could, when I'm better at sewing, maybe make this as like an actual top of a dress. And then I made another, or got another pants set, V1873. This is actually the one that I got the fabric for. I think I need a stiffer fabric for this. So here are those two side by side. Ugh, everything's falling. Then, because I love my bullet journal, I am loving my bullet journals, uh, Happy Planner was all on clearance and then in an additional sale. So all of these were like $12 instead of 40 or something. Like these are so flippin' expensive. I would never buy these full price. This one wasn't on clearance, so this one was just 50% off. So I think I only spent $4 on this, but I, I really like them. I use them for both my reading bullet journal and my crafting journal. I, okay, so in 2022, I fully converted to a digital agenda. I love, I need an agenda. I, I do a lot of things. This isn't supposed to be braggy. I just fill my day with a lot of activities and I have friends all over the country and I like to go travel and visit them. And I am not the type of person that just plans one activity a day. I tend to have like a, a morning and afternoon and evening activity. And so I need an, an agenda. I need something to keep track because I plan things out months in advance and I just can't remember all of it. And I don't need to remember all of it. I like to free up my brain space with other things. I don't need to remember that July 12th at three o'clock is when this particular thing goes on sale. No, I can set a reminder and my calendar can do that for me. Anyway, I what that means is I don't like, I felt like I wasn't getting the joy of using stickers to decorate my agenda anymore. So I started bullet journaling and not really journal journal. Again, it's reading journal. I have a normal journal. <laughs> so I just, I really liked these and they were on sale. So this one is just, you know, some nice quotes and um, some stickers to do topics or right over top of um, some frame stickers. So I got that and I'm not going to go through all of them, but I got this guy, which is all about plants. Very much love that. I, the Disney villains is what stopped me. This is what I have right now. I have two Disney stickers that I use and it's just, if you didn't know already, I love Disney. I I wouldn't call myself a Disney adult. I don't like do full Disney decorations. I don't cry when I see the castle. Um, but I love like Disney lore. Big fan. This one is a classic one. I just, again, I just thought it was pretty. It had, yeah, like these stickers, I feel like just work really well for a bullet journal. And then I got another one that is just called Radiate. And this one is just a lot 
you know, very simple and I thought would work really well. So there's that. I did get a new bullet journal. I'll talk about that in a different video. My plans for upcoming videos, I am going to do a what I knit in 2023. I will do a 2024 um, knitting goals and reflection on 2020. Oh, did I say 2024? 2024 knitting goals, reflection on 2023. Um, and then I thought I was going to do one for reading as well, like bullet journal flip through, which is where I'll show you my new bullet journal. Last thing I wanted to talk through is I saw somewhere on Instagram that someone was doing a, um, a sock cow just with themselves and she had picked out, they had picked out um, a bunch of sock sets to use up. And I thought, yes, I want to do that too. So I picked out 12 sock sets that are in my stash. And they're all different um, yarn dyers. They're not all sock sets that I, that came together. Um, I do have a Felici in here. And then a one or two of them are sock sets that I created myself. Like I just put the colors together and my plan is to knit one a month randomly. So with that in mind, I'm going to go draw because I wrote them all down on pieces of paper. I'm going to go draw that and share with you what sock I will knit in January. Here they are all written down on matching sized pieces of paper and the one I will be knitting with first I hope is not the Christmas themed one if it is I will redraw because I'm not doing a Christmas one in January it is the a homespun house March patreon from 2023 which is this guy right here so March sock set, it is tea room and bubble gum. If you're curious, they are one of a kind. You can get these through her Patreon. Um, so I am always a Patreon in December. And then I kind of just decide how long I do it. So normally I stick through February just as a little treat since my birthday is in February. Um, but last year I went to, I think it was either this is 2020. Two, three or 2022. I can't quite remember. But anyway, the minis are normally colorways you can get in their shop. The main color is almost always exclusive to Patreon. So unfortunately, you can't get this. But if you do like the bubble gum, that could potentially be there. So I got to pick out a pattern for this. It is a 75, uh, it's a 70 gram sock set. So it's a 50 gram and a 20 gram, which is totally fine for me. Um, I normally only use about 50 grams for a sock. So this will definitely be for all these socks are going to be for me. I picked out yarn that is for me and not for knitting for somebody else. So there it is. With that, I hope your 2023 was great. I hope you had a wonderful end of the year, a wonderful holiday season. I hope your 2024 is going to be fantastic as well. Did you get yarn for Christmas or for the holiday season? Did you have a New Year's cast on or a Christmas Eve cast on? Let me know below. I personally didn't have either, even though I said I would cast on for my Angora sweater. Um, I'm casting on in January. Like, don't worry, that's happening. I just, with everything that I cast on, I just wasn't in the mood for it. So, but it's happening. I look forward to talking to you again in my next podcast, as well as in those upcoming videos that I just mentioned. Oh, and I just did my whole outro. This sweater, this is the Orlina sweater. It was a test knit I made. 
It's made out of a BFL Masham yarn from Ginger Twist Studios. Uh, and the pattern was in a Making Stories uh, magazine. I believe you can buy the pattern individually. It is all over brioche, I think. I think it's all over brioche or half brioche. It does have a split hem. I'm ready to go to the gym after work. Very interesting construction. The sleeve has uh, two directions, right? So you're knitting this way and you're knitting this way. I don't love the neckline, so I kind of fold it down. That's the pretty much the thing that I really don't like about the sweater, but otherwise, there it is. Okay. Totally forgot to talk about this. Anyway, I need to go back to work. Thank you so much. I hope your holiday was wonderful. 2024. Fantastic. I will see you next time. Bye.